Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends. It is uh, 9.30 nearly, uh, and we are live for another ITFC transfer talk because Richard Town have just confirmed the signing uh, for an undisclosed fee, uh, Nathan Broadhead from uh, Everton. Obviously, he has been on loan in the championship this year. We'll get some stats, et cetera, et cetera, in just a moment. As always, we'd welcome your live thoughts this evening. Uh, you've got two ways you can do that via the live chat, a number of people already taking that option uh, or, or of course you could get active uh with your mobile phone ipad whatever uh, and come on the show and have your say directly in your own words totally unfiltered it's a live environment uh i'm now dropping the link to have your say what do you feel following the signing this evening i was hoping and praying they weren't going to make it a late one for me because you know unless you you're new to the platform and use the show uh, I am having a baby at the end of this week. Well, not me, but uh, my wife and I will have to be in attendance. So she says. And um, sleep will become a premium. So I'm hoping that it wasn't going to be a late one. 9.30. Am I old enough to consider that late? I probably am. But um, hey, the most important thing is we have a striker through the door, ladies and gentlemen. Or a second striker, but certainly one that comes with some pedigree. Let me just get. Uh, the article lot from itfc.co.uk, uh, which is announcing the broadhead signing. Uh, so we can have a quick look at it. Uh, here it is in all its glory. Uh, forward signs until 2026. Tanner completed the signing of Nathan Broadhead uh, for an undisclosed fee from Everton, the forward who netted 10 goals in 20 league games uh, while on loan at Sunderland in League One last season. Has penned a three and a half year deal. So obviously the half of this season and then three years from there. Um, which you know is a fairly hefty contract in modern football, I, I, you'd probably have to say. Uh, he is the Blues' his third signing of the window, uh, born in um, Bangor. Nathan started his, his youth career at Wrexham. He's got Premier League experience with his debut coming out at Brighton in uh, April 2021. He's had also awesome loan spells at Burton, uh, Albion and Wigan. Uh, he was on, on loan with Wigan in the first half of the season and Nathan gained championship experience scoring five goals in the process. An undisclosed fee. Twitter has been rampant with one to two million, whatever it might be. Tell you what, let's meet in the middle of the set on a 1.5. Let's call it that. What are your thoughts on that one? Will that put a target on the back of Ipswich Town Football Club now? You know, do they have to go and get promotion with the arrival of George Hurst, the 1.5 signing? It, we'll call it We'll call it 1.5 here. It's undisclosed officially. Um of Broadhead, of Massimo Luongo, etc. Uh, Joe S says, uh, extremely happy with, with, that, with that tonight. All the right attributes, along with being young and hungry, uh, tied into a good contract length too. Uh, ben Hobbs, great, great signing. Um, Joe S is, uh, is Ronald Saturday buzzing. Uh, Max Fax on a plane at Gold Coast Airport, about to depart for Melbourne, looking forward to catching up once I land. Uh, Lewis O'Connor, evening, what a statement signing, permanent also, 1.5 million, Broadhead is such an exciting attack of the future, is bright, a uh, num number of people are waiting to come on, I will try and get, you know, uh, get through as many as I can, I might just get one of you on, I do have to sleep at some point, uh, but Dino, uh, get in there, brilliant signing, bring it on, no excuses, onwards and upwards, uh, don't forget, if, you, if you're new here, Hit subscribe if you've been here a while, or, or if you're new. This is not just a new thing. Uh, hit the like button. It does really help us out. Um, we've got Simon Harris, glad transfers in during the early part of the month. Well done to the backroom staff at ITFC. Owen Griffiths, uh, the thing I love most about this is the difference in ambition when you compare to our championship years. So, so exciting. Alex Wilson, welcome in, my friend. How are you? Very good. Very good. Very excited to hear about this time. Um, not one I knew about. Not one I knew who who came out about in terms of a player, but he's obviously got some pedigree there. Um, so yeah, really pleased to get him in. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, he's only twenty four years of age, a year older than yesterday signing in George Hurst. Um, he's this this year his stats from Sofa Score, uh, total games he's played in at in the Championship twenty two started eleven five goals, uh, which is you know. It's huge. Five goals in in eleven starts. That's um, that's money for me. That's money. Yeah, and I I was I've been since this broke over a, a few days ago. You know that it was sort mm. of more further on the line than before. You know, there's been a lot of Wigan fans that are very upset that he's gone because they think that that is them condemned to coming down again. Because so right. you know so. 
Yeah, I, I know a lot of people, I've, I've seen some stuff saying, is he, do we really want to spend, a, you know, 1.5 on someone that spent, you know, he's got five goals in the championship. But for me, I think, you know, you almost go back and you look at the team that they're coming from and you get a barometer from their fans, um, you know, about the quality of play that we've got. And I know a lot of, um, so for me, I think it's a good time. I know a lot of Sunderland fans were hoping that he'd maybe go back there. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so you've got two good clubs there. And, you know, we've spoken in recent weeks quite a lot on this platform about, you know, the the strength of the depth of our squad and our bench, you know, with only having like sort of big spread and then Caden Jackson to sort of, you know, change your game as it were. But you've only got to look at it now. You've got Fela Dapo, George Hurst, Nathan Broadhead, you know, Gasson Hadney if the future for him is here. You know, I would pretend to say he's fourth choice now. Um, yeah, 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 big, yeah, big time. In, 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 in two days, you've gone from having no depth in the forward areas, arguably, to having probably one of the deepest forward lines we've had in a long, long time. So for me, it's only positive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I absolutely love this signing. Uh, somebody just, uh, somebody just, someone has just texted me a, a statement signing, uh, and I completely agree with, with 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 that notion. It is a statement signing. It is as close as you're going to get. People kept telling me we know we, we need to make that Marcus Stewart type signing. I'm not comparing the player at all, but it's certainly in that level of your third position right now. You need something that's going to be an impact. I've spoken about it over the course of several weeks. Have we got that ability from the bench? Do we have enough players coming off it that are going to make an impact? For me, the answer was no. Yesterday's signing is now a town player, so we're giving me his absolute best on Sat from Saturday onwards in George Hurst. But this, for me, is a real impact. He's a player that's got goals at League One level with Sunderland, goals in the championship this year. You know, he's not it's not spluttered and, and fouled for him uh, so far this year. He's, he's got going, he's got a he's got a run of games up, he's got five goals. This, for me, is a real shrewd... And it's a three-and-a-half-year deal, undisclosed fee. They, this is a, a long-term, but also a short... A long-term answer, potentially, yeah. but, a sh- but this, certainly this, a short-term this, one this, as well. This is one of those signings that Ashton is known for, you know, in a way, in terms of bringing him at 1.5, which, let's not split hairs, for our level of football at the moment, with a lot of money, you know. But I could quite easily see him being... Well, you got 1.5 million left back. I mean, I'm saying 1.5 million. It's, it's, an, it's an undisclosed fee. So it could be a one, it could be 1.2, it could be, could be, I, I, could I be t- 10 pence in a, in a bag of Monster Munch. It, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't know. But, um, yeah, if we're going on Twitter, I'm just going to meet in the middle and say yeah, 1.5. Yeah, um, and I, I think he could be he's at that age, you know, you know, where we could potentially flip him on for more money in the future. So... You'd hope so. You'd hope he'd... he'd I mean, if he, if he got five in the championship, if he gets five... We were talking about last night about, you know, the George Hurst contribution. I'm going to bring Richard Chandler in in a second. Um, you, can, you can stay right there, Alex. Um, but, you know, if you wanted... Rich wanted eight goals from George Hurst. What, what sort of return do you think would get... Would, would equate a decent return for, for Broadhead in the in the next 20 games? But to be honest, I, I think, you know, yes, we've paid money for Broadhead. But I, I don't think you... I think you can put him... If you can get eight out of him and eight out of Hurst, you know, with with, with Freddie chipping in as well. And I think, you know, you, you'll maybe see be- the better out of Freddie now in the sense that, you know, yes, he's got a fight to keep the shirt, but he's not got that pressure of being our one outlet anymore. True. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pressure is taken off his off his shoulders that that that, that little bit, isn't it? Uh, Lewis O'Connor, uh, we should run right against teams now. Great firepower for League One, probably the best uh, we've ever seen in this at this level. Uh, James Emma surely be our number one striker. That's a good question to lead into in a, in a momento. Uh, Stephen Paris, he had me going to Burton. Their strikers wanted by Wigan McSauceman. Uh, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised if had me go back to Burton for the second half of the season. Hearts think Jackson will stay. He's not a forward. Uh, Kane will be playing him wide, and it worked yeah, well. Really, last game but... could cover. Burns, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. This was um, the department that needs to be sorted out, says Dino. Great point there, Dino. Love that. Uh, evening, David. Hope you are well. Welcome in. How are you feeling this evening on the, the back end of a, of another transfer? Uh, what numbers are you wearing? Number 33, I believe. Five, thank you very much, David, for the five euro. Do appreciate that. I'll bring in Richard Chandler. Richard Chandler, I'll ask hey, you what, last a second ago, 
Uh, but first of all, your thoughts on the signing, the player, Nathan Broadhead, signed from Everton. What are your thoughts? It's, I'm buzzing. I think it's the, the signing that I wanted. I think he adds depth that we haven't had since TJJ got injured because he's a very similar kind of player to him in that he can play up top or he can play in one of the wider positions. Mm-hmm. And I think I personally think he'll play in the wider positions and it will be Ladapo and Hurst that rotate the, the number nine slot. Um, so I think we'll get goals, but we'll also get assists out of him. Mm. Oh, OK. So you're going to get the assists as well. He's got five goals in the Championship already this year. He's got 10 in 20, I think I just read on the official statement at Sunderland. Scored at Portman Road, obviously. Um, you know, yeah, 10 in 20 on at Sunderland. So he's got a little bit of scoring pedigree already in the last you know, 18 months. Similar to Chappers, though, isn't it? Chappers has got 13 and got three assists oh, this season and missed the penalty, so he could have had 14. And I think I think we could get a similar kind of return out of out of Broadhead quite comfortably because mm, he's, yeah. import- he's clearly in form. He hasn't played that many games and he's got five goals in the championship. Yeah. Uh, Mark D says, Richard Chandler, are you looking smart? Are you auditioning for The Apprentice again? <laughs> Am I what? Auditioning for The Apprentice again. <laughs> no, no. I, just, I, I haven't got changed since I finished work. To be honest, no problem. I smart, casual. We don't mind on this platform. Uh, James Elmer should comment. Sure, you're our number one striker. Then, when you look at his sofa score heat map, Richard, it's it's one of the more uh, balanced I've seen. Uh, certainly, while I've been looking at strikers through the window, uh, George Hurst last night, etc., where, where it's 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 very even spread across that front area. So, me suggesting he is. A player that can play anywhere, but but predominantly a central striker. Is he our number one striker now, do you feel? Because I feel, with the fee, he probably is. I, th- I think he possibly is. But with McKenna, do you, who, how do you predict where he's going to play him? Because I think McKenna's very astute at spotting stuff. I was the first person writing Jackson off. And the last few games that he's come on or played at the right, he's actually looked really good. And I'm... I've been far and away away from being his biggest fan um, because I just didn't see what he offered. But the last few games, he's been a lot better. Um, and that's under McKenna because we didn't see that in the three years we've had him previous. No. Very true. Very true. So is he number one striker then? Broadhead? <sighs> I'm trying to dodge the question, really, aren't I? Um, I, I think I think Ladapo's our number one striker because I think it's very hard to drop Ladapo when he's already on double figures and I think he does an awful lot of work. He plays the way that McKenna wants him to play now. Having been yep. one of two strikers at every other club he's ever played at, he's learned how to play a solo striker role. And I think he's doing a bloody good job at it. I, I think that's why I think Broadhead will play for the left 10 spot. Okay. you think they, So you think he'll battle for Marcus Harness's position the same way the Facebook user thought uh, he would do there. Yeah, that's that's where I think he'll go in. I okay. think I don't think he'll start Saturday. I think he'll be on the bench Saturday. Same as I think Hurst will be on the bench Saturday. Might come a little bit too early for him. I mean, he may have trained today. Obviously, we, we, I don't know the the ins and outs, the, the, the specifics of it. Um, but it could come a little bit too early for him to start on Saturday. Certainly, Alex. Where do you see um, uh, Nathan Broadhead? Uh, I want to keep calling him Broadhurst because. I'm doing what my granddad would have done and combining George Hurst and Broadhead and coming up with Broadhurst. But um, Nathan Broadhead, yeah, where, where, where do you see him playing? I I could see him playing that left, but I think that would be, that'd be harsh on Harness. I think Harness has come in and done well in, in that left position. But it, it's an embarrassment of Richards. And, you know, we talk about number one striker. I'm not sure we have a number one striker because I think... McKenna plays the players that he thinks will be suited to the team that we're playing against. Um, so, mm. you know, some, one week you might see Ladapo, next week you might see Hurst. You know, it, it, it's all about... We, we don't... I, I would almost go if I say we possibly don't have a, a, a first eleven in, in the conventional sense that, you know, you would possibly... that you associate with football. I think we have... A, a squad of players that McKenna picked from that he thinks can get results at certain games depending on the opposition set up. I think mm. it's a lot more fluid than it maybe has been in years gone years gone by. Absolutely. Um, before I bring the fisherman in, Mr Chandler, any more for you? 
Um, the only other thing I was going to say about it is that I think that beginning of the season, it was our bench that was coming on and changing gap, ga- well, not changing games, but taking games away from the opposition in a lot of instances. And that's what we're going to go back to now because we've now got a fully fit best bench in the league as well as the best of 11 in the league. So if it's not working for the 11 that are out there, we're going to have the, the strength in depth again that we haven't had since all the injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good point. That yeah, a yeah, yeah, number of times we would use the bench to just take the game away from the opposition when we're winning. Um, mm. You know, make it that little bit more difficult to get back in the game. We've not had that. You're absolutely right for a number of weeks. Okay, Richard, appreciate you coming on. Look after yourself. All the best. See you later. Up and down, Mr. Fisherman. Welcome in. Um, your thoughts on on the signing, undisclosed fee, uh, a three and a half year deal. It's ambition. It's a statement signing. As Ben uh, Adams says earlier in the chat, it's a declaration of war on League One. Um, I think we've got to be careful not to get too hyped up, let's be honest, because town does ever have a have a tendency to sort of Very bite true. us in the arse now and again, don't we? Listen, um, we all wanted these type of signings uh, at the start of the season. We weren't able to get them, but uh, as the season progressed, we got some, you know, we got great points on the board. I know we're sitting third and I'm, we all get frustrated as fans. I do. I'm terrible for it. But we wanted these type of players in, and we went and got them. Under Marcus Evans, we'd have been lucky if we'd have got, you know, a League Two player or a non-League player come in. Mm. You know, the difference between now and and the and the years and the years of, of pain that we all as fans went through is that players want to come here now, not for money. Because they've, you know, it's it's all well, it's always for money, isn't it? But what I mean by that, it's it, they want to come here and they want to play for us. They see it. They see Ipswich as a club that's progressing um, and has a has a plan, a real plan, not like a five year, the two five year plans we had under Evans, which I, well, I'm not sure they were plans. But what we have now is we have owners that 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 want to progress. We have Mark Ashton, who, look, I was questioning a little bit after the signings of the summer, but now you can't. You can't question, you know, the work he's put in to get these signings in. I mean, Hurst, I I wanted him at the start of the season. We didn't get him, but now we got him. You know, Broadhead, what a signing, you know? Um, I mean, Alungo, I mean, look, you know, he's come in, played for us before, when when we go out on Saturday, um, if we hadn't had these two signings, I wouldn't have given us a hope in hell against Plymouth, because I just didn't feel we had nothing on the bench that would come on. You know, we got Jackson. I mean, we all know. Look, you know, everybody knows I'm not a fan of him. Um, and while he had an okay game on Saturday, you know, that's again one of his one in mm. ten games where he plays well. You know, and right now. We've got Hurst that come off a bench. We've got Broadhead that could come off a bench. Or, you know, you've got Ladapo that could be on the bench, come off the bench. You've got Harness that could come off the bench. We've got so much strength and depth. Um, and I just feel that... I, I can't help but feel that, that that we're getting promoted. I genuinely Don't get too hyped, he starts up by saying, and then ends up with saying... <laughs> I've got to, I know. I've got to I'm feel. talking. To, look, there was there was there was one or two comments in the chat. Oh, we're going to thrash Plymouth. We're going to we're going to walk the league. And, look, <coughs> nothing's a gimme. But <coughs> excuse me, nothing is a gimme. But let's be honest, you know, as a, with these signings, you can't help but feel Jesus. Unless something seriously goes wrong, where'd you play him? We are sorry. Where'd you play him? Where where would you be slotting him into? Oh, I don't know. It's one of those, isn't it? It's... A lot of options. Yeah, a lot of options. Do, do you know what? Do you know what? I think with them, I think with the two forward players, Bro- um, Broadhead and Hurst, they can all and, and even Ladapa, they can, you know, they can all play in that like three, can't they? Mm. Is there an option for two up front? Would yeah, formation be... change. I was going to ask you about that. Got a comment would that, would in the that, chat would about that it. Be... I mean, you know, 
I think I think what we do have is we have, you know, whereas before, like like we're against Lincoln, we played like thirty five shots on goal or something, or thirty five shots and only like five on target or whatever. And I think what Hurst and Broadhead brings is yes, they're going to do the same shots on tar- shots, but there's going to be a lot more on target and there's going to be a lot more goals. I think, I think you know, we could end up with being top scorers in this league with the, with the firepower that we have now. I mean, mm. look, you know, if I was if I was Plymouth manager and I was a Plymouth owner and I was Sheffield Wednesday, I'd be like, you know, I always say the psychological psychologists. Now let me get my teeth in. Psychology plays a huge part in football, and when you when your oppositions. When your opposition and your your direct challengers are 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 doing this kind of buying and these kind of signings, you can't help but think, oh, great, you know, we just got to, uh, you know, look if we can finish, like like play, some club managers have said, whoever finishes above Ipswich will get promoted. Mm. So, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're actually right there. Yeah. Um, the only thing I, I, the only, there's only one player I'd like to. There's only one position I'd like to see come in. Yeah, nice question. Back. Go on. Okay. A right, a right back for um, just to help, just to help Danassi in a bit. Oh, so what replace him or what? not replace him? No, no, no. Oh. You know, I mean, you know, he's 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 he, you know he's he's twilight years, isn't he? Sort of thing, you know. He's, he's twenty nine, you know, and um, you know, he's played a lot of games. I just, you know, I don't think KVY is is a is a direct replacement. If I'm honest, I don't think he's as good as Danassi. Um, I just, I just think, I just think that maybe, you know, maybe a right back come in and just sort of, you know, 70 minutes to go, replace him a bit like Greg Lee and Leif Davis, you know, you've got that nice sort of player to come off the bench. I mean, Greg, okay. Leif Davis is a, is probably a better left back than Greg Lee, but Greg Lee offers something different and offers a bit, offers a bit of energy. Whereas Danassian, you know, he does look, he's played a lot of games on that right hand side and the right back. And I think it'd be nice if we could sort of get someone in just to help him out a bit and just, uh, you know, so we could keep him fit for the rest of the season, you know, and then, mm. You know, and then hopefully end of the season we'll all be sitting here big smiles on our faces because we're back in the championship because that's that's ultimately where we want to be. Absolutely, Mike. Appreciate you coming on from the from what looks like the fishing bank. So uh, appreciate yeah, I it. Am. First time on the bank this year. Love it. Well, let's, let's hope Ashton's the only one catching a a prize tonight. So uh, look after yourself. All the best, guys. Take care. Boom. Look that look. Almost, I'm good at this hosting job. That bit. Oh, that was almost quite good. That was almost rather good. Um, uh, we've got a couple of comments coming. I want to get your your thoughts on it as we sort of round up this transfer talk special. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, you can become a Talking Town fifth stander. Support the platform by hitting the join button on YouTube. You can cancel at any point. Uh, Trigger Lee says, think it will improve the players we already have as, as gets has got to play well to keep uh, keep their place. But effectively, you know, competition for places, Alex, really important. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you've got players in now that will push each other. Um, and, you know, we, we've said in, in years gone by, you know, we had our first 11 and you'd sub on and the quality of the team would really drop because there wouldn't be that depth behind them. I think, you know, I think now what we've got, we're like like um, Rich said a few minutes ago, you know, we're now back at that point where we're at the start of the season where you can change it around if it's not working and you're not weakening the team by doing it. Yeah, there's the same, isn't there? Iron sharpens iron. You know, when you're yeah. going up against other good players in training, when you're surrounded by good players, you know, you know, the rising tide rises all ships and all that. You know, you can, you can bring any sort of quote you want into it. The, the fact is, you've got more uh, quality within the ranks. You've got more yeah, of a chance of, of doing something. Building on what Mike said, and this is no disrespect to Gaston or Hadney, but, you know, under previous regimes, he would have been the market. He would have been the marquee signing. Correct. He, he would he would have been that one. Well, that Ollie would, Hawkins says hi. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, it, it, if, because I, I know, I think it was Sunday afternoon, show you were saying about Fridge potentially make, making the move. I think, you know, it, it, for me, if, if that were to happen, I think we need another centre. centre I think back. we do anyway. I think we do anyway. I I, I really would, and I, that, that was my next. Uh, you've just led in perfectly there because Ben says in the in the chat. Arguably, defence is our weakest area. Shrewdness, we decide top centre back or a right back. Now, if I'm saying I'm with Ben, if I'm thinking my my back line is already maybe the or the area, the position group is already a, a you know the, the area of weakness, and Fridge is in that group. Again, you know, I'm not saying 
This ain't gonna say gov moving him on before we have to. This is just, if we if we get a suitable offer coming, I wouldn't be as upset as I would have been. I don't know this time last year, maybe. Yeah, like, I, I think I think as well that that what you've got to remember is with with this ownership now, those moves won't be made unless we've got somebody coming in with, with the with the two signings that we've made in the last two days. I think that puts the um. I don't think you'll see Morgan Whitaker in a town. I don't think you ever would have seen him in a town shirt anyway, but I certainly think after the business we've done the last two days, mm-hmm. I, I don't see him coming in because is he going to come in and play ahead of Broadhead? No. Is he going to come in and play ahead of Hurst? Probably not. You know, I, and I think it, 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 it wouldn't surprise me if he did, if, if he was... Um, on, on the old dashboard, it really wouldn't. But, you know, I think, you know, possibly after he got recalled and the, you know, what he said on his Instagram, it wouldn't surprise me if we, if we pivoted to somebody else. Because how many times have you heard this ownership say, we only want players here that are going to be here and going to want to be here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, absolutely. But there we go. So we got another one through the door. Uh, Nathan Broadhead signing from Everton, undisclosed fee, three and a half year deal. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for watching this uh, impromptu uh, transfer talk. I'm of course your host, the Gov. That has been the wonderful Alex Wilson. We've had a, a five euros from David. Thank you very much, David. And of course, contributions from Richard Chandler and the Fisherman. And of course, all of you wonderful uh, guys and girls in the live chat. Until Wednesday, 8.30, last day before I become a dad of three. Good Lord. I ain't nervous. Fucking bricking it. Um, and I, I haven't really got to do anything. Um, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the evening. Uh, we'll, see you well, we'll see you Wednesday. I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. What is that? Is that my phone? Oh, it's promotion calling.